Hello and welcome to the How To Carnivore podcast. I'm your host, Simon Lewis, and you're tuning into the Plant Free MD series with Dr. Anthony Chafee. Dr. Chafee is a surgeon, nutritional researcher, and former pro rugby player. He's been strict carnivore for three years and an on and off carnivore for more than 20. Dr. Chafee looks and feels like a real life superhero. If losing fat, building muscle, finding focus, and getting the most out of life is important to you, you're going to love the Plant Free MD series. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the How To Carnival podcast. And we're back with Anthony Chafee, MD, the Plant Free MD. And today's topic is dairy. I've had a lot of people reach out to me saying, hey, can I have dairy on the carnivore diet? Does dairy have sugar in it? Uh, am I lactose intolerant? How am I going to get calcium if I don't have dairy? All these questions. So um, today we're going to smash it out. Uh, and talk all things dairy. So, Anthony, welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. How are you doing? Good, man. Very good. Now, I've never seen you guzzling down a carton of milk on your Instagram. Is this uh, is this yeah. something you do, or what's going on? <laughs> no, very, very rarely. Like I used, I used to love milk, and I, I mean, I do love milk. Yeah, me but too. yeah, it, you know, it has it has enough lactose that this is going to cause a problem. It's going to cause uh, an insulin a blood sugar spike and an insulin spike. And, um, and that's just not what you want. It kicks you out of your primary metabolism. It starts making you, you know, glucose driven as opposed to running on all of your different energy sources, such as blood sugar, glycogen and ketones. And mm -hmm. so it gets you out of that primary metabolic state and puts you back into a, a, uh, you know, a state where you're, you're packing in fat and you're, and you're storing fat in your, in your fat cells, as opposed to utilizing the energy in your fat cells. And so it's just a completely different, uh, way of, of functioning, uh, as, as an energy supply. And so milk can do that as well. And so, so I do stay away from that. Yeah. Yeah. Because even though dairy is an animal product, it's got lots of fat protein, but also has a lot of carbohydrates. It's got sugar in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the lactose uh, sugars is, uh, you know, it's a disaccharide, meaning that it's a combination of glucose and galactose just stuck together. Mm -hmm. And that gets broken down into glucose and galactose, as you would imagine. So that raises your blood sugar. You know, it's not as mm -hmm. bad as fructose, uh, you know, like from, from fruit and honey, certainly wouldn't uh, touch that, but um, it is bad for your, uh, for your body and, and your metabolism and it bumps up your your insulin as well. So high blood sugar is damaging and this, this kills you. This is what, uh, part of what kills diabetics by glycation, the glucose molecules physically fusing to various molecules. But then in response to that, your body raises insulin, which is protective against this high blood sugar, but it also causes a myriad of problems that, that you really don't want and mm. uh, cause huge harm. So yeah, it's, it's definitely best to be avoided every now and then fine. But you know, th there's this, this idea that you need to be, that you need to eat carbohydrates and go back and forth because you want to be metabolically flexible. That has absolutely no basis in reality or science and, and evidence. So I, I was just talking to professor Ben Bickman of BYU, mm -hmm. uh, who has, you know, is a biochemist and, and a professor of bioenergetics um, at BYU has been studying insulin in the body for over 15 years and asked him that very specifically, you know, because I, I always thought it, was a bit of a bit rot, but I asked him and I was like, what, what are the hard facts on this? He's like, absolutely not. It doesn't matter. And he, and he went through the exact biochemistry of it and what happens and, and how this stuff looks and how it can seem like that. You know, if you haven't eaten, um, carbohydrates, you haven't even out of that, uh, state for a while, you're just not storing insulin in your pancreas because you're not, you're not just getting ready and protect your body's not in this protective uh, mode and, and, and building up this tolerance because, you know, it's just anticipating this big jolt of, of, uh, you know, glucose. And so it's not anticipating that. And so that breaks it down because your body is very efficient. And then all of a sudden you do a glucose tolerance test and all of a sudden, oh, your, your insulin spikes or your, sorry, your, your blood sugar spikes. And like, oh, you're not, not tolerant to this. No, but it, actually, if you prime the pump and you have a bit of glucose before a bit of sugar before the next time you eat it, it'll be primed up and you'll actually have a much better response. Um, so it, there's this sort of false, uh, false picture that you get. And I think that's, that's leading people astray. So the idea that you need to eat this crap in order to, um, you know, keep, keep up some metabolic flexibility is absolutely not based in, in science or reality. You, you do not have to eat any carbohydrates. Just to, just, just to go back to the pump analogy. So, mm -hmm. so the misconception is that you need to kind of like, 
prime the pump by eating carbohydrates so that it's ready if you do eat some to to then absorb but the reality is what's what, what what's the reality like in the pump analogy i'm just not, I'm not yeah so there. so when, when you're eating a lot of a lot of glucose and carbohydrates your your body makes more insulin than it's not just yep. producing insulin when you're eating it it makes a lot of insulin and and stores it in the pancreas and gets it ready so just like in bile case there's in more bladder glucose coming yeah. So just like, like, like you have bile in your gallbladder and you eat a fatty meal, it can just squirt out a whole bunch of bile right at once. Whereas if you don't have a gallbladder, it just sort of slowly drips out. Um, it's a little different than that because you, you don't have insulin slowly dripping out. You will come out in a, in a very controlled manner. But when you're, when you eat, uh, carbohydrates, if you've been eating a lot of carbohydrates, you, you will have pre-made a lot of insulin and store that in your pancreas anticipating more. a big, you know, oh, carbohydrate driven sorry. meal. And then as soon as that comes in, boom, it dumps in a big load of, of insulin. However, when you're not eating a bunch of, of carbohydrates, it doesn't do that. Your body's very efficient. It's not going to make something uh, unnecessarily. It's not going to expend energy unnecessarily. You know, because you, you expend the energy unnecessarily, you, you die off. Your species doesn't survive because everything is so tightly controlled uh, in the wild that you have to be very, very careful. And so when you're not eating carbohydrates, your body's just not making a whole bunch of insulin in, in preparation for a big glucose rich meal. And so that first hit, you know, you, you will get an insulin response. Your body will get this stuff down. Uh, but that, that initial, uh, hit of glucose will raise your blood sugar more than in, you know, uh, in others, other times, but you know, if you take, if you take some, you know, drink some milk even, or, or something like that, take in some carbohydrates, you know, a couple of days before you take this glucose uh, tolerance test, you'll actually get a better response than anyone else, because you're actually, you're, you're, you're you have no insulin resistance. You have no uh, metabolic issues with that. It's just that you haven't, you don't have this insulin ready to go uh, unless you you sort of prime the pump as it were. So you, there's no, there's no such thing as this metabolic inflexibility or flexibility. You're always going to be flexible. These are processes that, that exist in your body and, and, and will continue to exist. In fact, you get, you, you get inflexible when you eat a bunch of carbohydrates because that shuts down your body in so many different ways and causes disease, uh, to, you know, to in, in all sorts of different ways. Mm, okay. Metabolic flexibility is a big topic. We'll go into that another time because I've got, I've got a few questions, but sticking with the milk, um, a big one is do people need calcium from dairy? No, you don't, uh, you, you get everything you need, uh, from meat and there, um, there were studies that actually looked at areas that, you know, drank a lot of milk and had a lot of calcium and they actually found that you know, this didn't really significantly help, uh, the bone density or osteoporosis. And, and in fact, in, in some instances suggest that, uh, they, they didn't have as good, bone density as it age. These are going to be multifactorial. Obviously yeah. there's a lot, a lot of other things going on. Yeah. With hormonal health as well, but that it, it didn't show any, you know, clear benefit. These people drink, you know, had a lot of dairy and got a lot of calcium and it actually didn't show that they had, you know, uh, much better results with, with bone health. Um, and so that, that's actually, um, if people have read the book, uh, lies, my doctor told me by Dr. Ken Berry, he has, mm. a, he has a chapter in there talking oh, about calcium that specifically. Yeah. That, about that specific, yeah, it's calcium and dairy and, uh, and, and those studies that I, that I mentioned there, he goes into further detail and actually cites, cites the, those sorts of works as well. If people want more sort of information on that, I, I would recommend they, they go read it, which is a great book anyway. It's very, very, very information, mm -hmm. information heavy yeah. and very, Ken Berry's great. yeah, it's great. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So yeah, you don't, you don't need that. You don't need the calcium. You get everything you need from meat. I mean, you know, going through the ice times, like we haven't had animal husbandry for all that long. And there are, there are plenty of, of civilizations like the ancient Ethiopians. I, I, I mentioned with, you know, Herodotus chronicling ancient Ethiopians meeting the Persians and they talk about, they just, you know, they drink the cattle of their milk uh, or the, the milk from their cattle and, <laughs> and, and, and they're fine. You know, the Maasai do this as well. So, I mean, there, there are civilizations and populations that thrive on dairy and that's, that's fine, but that's, that's certainly not everyone. And, and, and a lot of people in the world, 
uh, can have serious problems with it. So you don't, you don't need it anyway. And, you know, when we coming through the ice times, through the ice ages, we, you know, we didn't have, you know, herds of cattle with us. It's, you know, I, I don't, you know, I, I haven't seen any evidence of that. I don't think we were herding at that, at that point. Uh, we were still just uh, exclusively hunting. So but we, were, way, we were hunting animals, we weren't drinking their milk. Yeah, exactly. At and point. at that point, yeah. And, and certainly, you know, there's an, there have been a number of ice stages. So maybe the most recent one, maybe some people had started, you know, uh, livestock husbandry at that point. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I haven't seen any information on that um, to suggest that, but let's say that they did the one before that they definitely didn't. And the one before that, and the one before that, and the one 3 million years ago, when this all started, mm. they did not, mm. uh, that we know of. And actually, so, that, yeah. so that, that might be a good segue into like modern cow's milk versus ancient cow milk. I think, I think you've mentioned something to me about this before in that, like yeah. in terms of fat content, maybe. Well, it, it, yeah, well, it depends on, it depends on the breed, but like the Maasai themselves, like the, the animals that they have, they have, they have more fat percentage. So they have like 8% milk fat so eight uh, percent of the fat whereas ours is like three three and a half to four percent okay but you know we, we've been milking other things you know like cleopatra apparently like donkey's milk is like the most is like super rich and super creamy and that was like the most <laughs> prize because like you just sounds not, rank you know, like yeah <laughs> donkeys don't have um you know they don't have big udders like a like a cow mm. and and so it's harder to get and it was more prized and so uh, Cleopatra would bathe in, in ass's mill. And, um, and that was like his, his big thing. And, um, because that was, that was just the most prized, it was the most creamy. And, and, mm. uh, and, um, so that was why they really liked it. So there's, there's different kinds of kinds of milk, but yeah, uh, it's been easier to, to, to have the dairy industry be, you know, with the cows because, you know, they, they, they produce a ton of it and mm. it's easy to get it off of them. Uh, but yeah, but anyway, to roll back to it, yeah, you don't need it to get uh, calcium. You get everything you need from uh, from meat by definition. Like this is just this is this is how we evolved, and um, you know, just like you know, lions and and all other carnivores, they get all their ca calcium just from eating meat as well. And yeah, and so that that's not an issue. You don't have you don't have to eat dairy if you if you want some, that's fine. But it you know, but it comes along with problems as well like the lactose and milk, but you have mm. fermented milk products that a lot of that lactose is gone. Not necessarily all of it, but it, it can be all of it. But I was, was going to ask about that. It's like, you know, butter and ghee, that's, that's the fat from milk. That's, that's yeah. you know, it doesn't that, I'm pretty sure that doesn't have much lactose in it or, or carbohydrate. No. So when no. it, that, that consuming that stuff is different to, uh, to drinking like, you know, a big glass of milk because the glass yeah. does have the lactose. It does have the carbohydrates in it. Yeah, no, it, it is very different. Yeah. And, and so ghee would just be the fat butter would be the fat with the milk proteins, yep. but it wouldn't, wouldn't really have any lactose yeah. in it. And, you know, but there, there are some people that they do have problems with the milk proteins and, you know, so even maybe even a bit of butter is going to set them off. You know, the, you know, people talk about, you know, a one protein versus a two protein, a two mm -hmm. protein being less inflammatory. And, uh, and this being better for you. And it is, but A2 is still, you know, can, can lead to inflammation as well. It's just a lot less. Okay. And there's, so, there's a whole yeah. product around A2 milk. I think it's really yes. popular, really popular in Asia because a lot of Asian people mm. um, have lactose intolerance. Well, that wouldn't, that wouldn't it, affect uh, lactose. Oh, okay. the lactose intolerance. Yeah. Lactose. So that, that would be, yeah, that, that would be the, the protein casing proteins. Um, would be different kinds of proteins and, and some would be more or less inflammatory. Um, and so there, there is a two milk out there. You can, you can buy it in the store. I've, I've seen it regularly and, and it is better. It has, it, it causes less inflammation, but it still causes it a bit. And so if you're, you're sensitive to this, that, that can be a problem. So I always, always caution people with autoimmune diseases to be you know very wary of dairy uh, especially early on when they're still quite unwell and, and they might have leaky gut and things are getting through easier, uh, more easily than, than they would otherwise, they can have more of a problem and, and to really avoid dairy. A lot of people with autoimmune issues uh, can't, can't really handle uh, dairy in any form. And so it's just, it, it's just to be mindful of that. And, and, you know, I always recommend people just go, you know, pure as a driven snow 
for at least two weeks, if not a month, and then maybe try something, you know, adding something back in and seeing, and then yep. all of a sudden you have eggs and you're like, well, that doesn't work for me. Or you try in uh, you know, a glass of milk and you just sort of feel a bit crummy and it's not where you want to be. So, you know, don't, don't use it or even cheese and, and yogurt and butter. Mm. Um, but yeah, they can be, they can be pro-inflammatory. The other problem uh, with dairy is that, you know, whenever you talk about like, yes, dairy is okay, mm. but it's not, but you don't have to have it. And it's, and it's not optimal because it isn't, it doesn't have all the nutrients that you need. Meat is the meal. Meat is what is going to give you all of your requisite nutrition. And if you're drinking a bunch of milk or, or a bunch of dairy products, you know, first of all, you're, you're going to be getting lactose, which is going to raise your insulin, which is going to disrupt your, your hunger signaling pathways. And you're going to be hungry and you're going to overeat anyway. Okay. So that's something that you don't want to do because it's going to block, uh, leptin and leptin tells your brain that you're full from stretch receptors in your stomach, but most importantly, uh, and more abundantly, it comes from your fat cells. And so your brain knows how much fat you have and how much energy you have in reserve. And so now you have blocked your leptin and your brain thinks you're, you're out of energy. And now your blood sugar is dropping because your insulin's up. And then your brain gets a signal, uh, a panic signal that says, Hey, if you don't eat, you're going to die because you're, you don't have any leptin. So you don't have any fat and your blood sugar is dropping. So that's why people get very, very upset and, and, and Anxious. agitated. Yeah. And so you can get that with milk. You can get that with lactose. And so to be mindful of that, but also you're just not going to get all the nutrients. And so you're, you're, you're still going to want to eat meat. And so you this can, you know, have you eat more than you, you may want causes inflammation, which causes you to retain water causes all these other problems as well. And so a lot of people actually will end up putting on weight, uh, or stalling their weight loss, or maybe not getting this, the same, uh, amount of weight loss that they normally would. I've seen this, um, you know, with my brother, when he did this early on, because I, you know, I, I tell people this, and I try to tell him, I like, only use this as a condiment, have it very sparingly, only really eat the meat, melt some cheese on the meat. If you want, maybe put a dollop of sour cream on some, uh, you know, ground beef, but like really, you know, that's it. It should just be a condiment used sparingly. And people hear that and go, oh, okay, I can have dairy. And they just, they'll just start eating blocks of cheese, drinking tons of milk and just eating just buckets of, of plain yogurt. Yeah. And, and, and then they have problems. My brother, my brother ran into this because he was one of these, um, people that sort of, you know, just heard the dairy was okay and, and didn't hear the use sparingly, uh, part of it. And, and he started eating just a ton of dairy and drinking a lot of milk because mm. it's good. It tastes delicious and you get carb addicted as well. This is, this is, Part of that cycle and you'll end up overeating. So he ended up gaining back all the weight that he lost prior, you know, initially from going carnivore. And so he just, you know, he just realized he's like, I cannot have dairy. I, yeah. and he, he'll very rarely now, but he just, he doesn't have it uh, like that. And so, and so it's like every now and then he'll use it as a condiment. Or and I've, I've, I've had the same That's experience. It. Like I, I was like, yeah. okay, cool. You know, dairy is good for you. I'll give them to the maid by cow and I've guzzled it. Yeah. And for me, it just like, it just put on weight really quickly and I can't stop. And it doesn't make me, made by cow particularly, I love it. it tastes so good. It doesn't make me feel sick or anything like that. But in terms of just putting on fat, probably a little bit of muscle because there's heaps of protein in there, but just a lot of fat. It's not what most people want. Maybe if you're like 14 and you're trying to be a front rower in rugby and you're trying to put yeah. on like 10 kilos in two weeks, it will actually, yeah. that's, I reckon that's the best thing you can do. But most yeah. people I speak to aren't trying to put on weight, definitely not trying to put on fat. Yeah. And, you know, and, and you think about it, you know, I mean, I, 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 I don't want to like sort of, uh, you know, blow the argument that, that, you know, sometimes like vegans or vegetarians are used. It's like, you know, that's, that's food for a baby cow. How dare you stole in that mother's milk? And like easy, but I would agree in, in the sense that we don't need, we don't need to, to drink milk or, or have dairy uh, after we've been weaned. We don't, we don't need it. And it's so, a, yeah, it's a trait. You know, yeah, exactly. And so it should be, it should be treated as such. And so it maybe it's something nice and as, as an addition, but it's not something that you need and it's not optimal. Mm -hmm. And so if you're worried about optimizing your health and optimizing your, your, your performance and your growth and your development as a child or your development of your children and your, and your aging, then that's something that you should uh, be mindful of and, and use it sparingly because, because no matter how you look at it, meat is going to be better. 
you know, even if milk isn't a net negative for you, it is for some people, but let's say it's not, let's say it's still a net positive meat's going to be a much bigger positive. And so you're still losing out on that disparity. And yeah. And, and, but that's the thing too. I have, I've had so many friends do that as well. And like, I don't know what it is, but like in Perth, um, you know, when Costco came in, they started selling like these big tubs. It was like, it was two kilo tubs of halloumi cheese. And, um, and so when I tell people, I was like, yeah, you know, you can have some cheese, but melt it onto meat. Don't use it all the time. All that. the same thing. I say it same exact way. Every time I'm so careful. I get more and, and more like, careful every time I say it. Halloumi, good. And that's it. It's like, oh, I can eat cheese. And that's the only thing they eat. And they go, and I swear, <laughs> there's so many people that, that, um, I've told them this, um, you know, they're saying like, oh yeah, I'm just, you know, having, I'm just not really losing as much weight. And my, I'm going in like all the stuff that they're eating. It turns out that they've just been eating buckets of halloumi cheese and nothing else. They have not eaten other things. And so they just get, they just get these two kilo tubs of halloumi. And like, that's just what they eat for like a week or two. And they'll have some meat here and there, but like the majority of what they're eating is just tubs of halloumi cheese. And you know, it's, it's, it's funny, very, but it, it's kind of funny, but it's, <laughs> yeah, but it's, yeah, but it's kind of frustrating. You're like, I never said that. I said yeah, specifically yeah. don't do that, but, but you know, it's, it's, it's nice, you know, we like it, but it's not optimal and, and you don't want it, you don't want it replacing uh, a lot of meat. And that's, and that's something that people mm. do is that they'll eat so much of it. It will replace the meat that they're supposed to eat or they're getting the meat that they're supposed to eat. And this is in addition to that. And so they're, they're getting more than their body wants. Mm. And you, you can overeat if you force feed yourself, you know, of course you can, no, you can overeat that stuff. Even yeah. just, just with pleasure. I, I reckon to yeah. kind of build on this point that you're saying a, a good way to start might be like eat your meat first and maybe your eggs mm. wait five or 10 minutes. And then if you're still hungry and you want to treat, it's like, yeah, you have a little bit of, you know, bit of dairy bit of halloumi glass of milk whatever whatever floats your boat but yeah fill up on the meat first yeah i think so and and uh you know and 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 again you know use dairy as a condiment to the meat as opposed to a separate part of the meal in and of itself or or just a separate meal that's Um, the key point i reckon yeah and so you know if you have cheese on meat and you eat those things together fine yeah. But if you're just eating chunks of cheese and then you go eat meat, then you're, then you're messing up, you know? Okay. So uh, how, how do you do it? Anthony? everyone loves hearing about what, what you're eating. So how do you, how would you incorporate dairy if you do it with your meal? I, well, I use butter. I like butter and I don't have a problem with it. Um, if people have problems with the milk proteins, then they should just use ghee or tallow. Tallow's imminently better actually. Um, and so if you have access to like grass fed tallow, just, just use that. If you want to add some, some fat to your meat, um, I don't have a problem with butter. so I'll use butter and I'll, I'll sort of melt that on. If the, if the steak is too lean or the meat's too lean, uh, that's pretty much all the dairy I use at, at all. Just butter, butter and cake. That's it. Yeah. And, and I, I generally don't buy cheese. These things are just, a, they are addictive because you do enjoy them. And so like, if you buy a bunch of cheese, you just all sort of go, oh, that's good. You want to cut off a chunk mm. of cheese and just snack mm. on it. I don't, I don't like snacking. I think, I think that if I'm hungry enough to snack, it means I'm hungry enough to eat and I should have a meal of meat and I should just get, get it over with. Mm. And so, you know, and, and when you're in that sort of snacky phase and you just kind of want to eat something that means you're hungry and you should eat, have a meal. A. Yeah. but B, you know, if you, if you don't then eat, then you're going to eat, you know, stupid things that you, you probably shouldn't eat. And so you just need to recognize that. And so I don't, I don't like having cheese around for that, but if I were to have cheese, like the only time I really have cheese is, um, you know, if maybe you have like a, you know, like a, 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 you know, meat board or something like that. And there'll be uh, little slices of, of cheese with the meat, you know, I'll eat those together. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's, that's very rare. Like there's, you know, my, my or melted on burgers. I've tasted yeah, exactly. cheese melted on yeah. burgers. So and and so I'll, I'll melt things on, on uh, burger patties. And that's it. So, and, nice. um, you know, so those would be the only times I'd really have cheese. And then sometimes I'll get some sour cream and, and put it on again, like hamburger meat and, um, you know, just sort of stir fried up and then put some of that on there, maybe some cheese in there as well, but, um, very rarely, but it's always as a condiment. It's always on meat. And so it's never, never by itself. You know, I saw my parents, 
my first doings, my mom was, was cooking uh, some meat, had like a, a roast in the oven and it wasn't going to be done for a while. And she's sitting there with my dad with this giant cheese platter with a whole bunch of just cheese cut up and they're just, just chowing down on cheese. And I was like, well, Hey mom, you know, you really shouldn't just eat cheese on its own. It should be part of a meal with me. It's like, well, this is part of the meal. We have dinner cooking. It's like, that is not going to be done for an hour. And you're going to fill up on the cheese, which is not optimal. It's not going to have everything that you need. And it's going to have- upset a lot of cheese board lovers here. Yeah. Well, like but the, you know, it's like the you classic it, just girls. Have it, like- just have it. Yeah, I know. No, um, but <laughs> no it, dinner. You have like cheese and wine as well. And that, I've, I've already weighed in on that too. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, that's even worse. But, you know, just have it with meat, you know, have a meat plate. You know, meat plates are awesome. <laughs> and, and, and have some cheese in there with it. But, you know, that, that was the thing. You, you can fool yourself very quickly, you know, and saying, oh, I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a meal. I'm, I'm cooking a steak and you just sit there and you just eat half a block of cheese while you're waiting. Like you're going to, you're, you're going to uh, do something to yourself that you're not wanting to. You're going to get, you know, more calories. You're going to get, uh, you know, more dairy and meat. And you're either going to offset the nutrition that you're getting from meats. So you're not going to, you're going to be a bit deprived or, you're going to, you know, eat more than than your body would have asked you to otherwise, because it, you know, you added in a bunch of, you know, uh, fat and protein, and now your body actually wants the rest of the nutrients, and so it wants you to eat that in meat, and so you end up overeating, and especially okay. if you if you're doing uh, carbohydrates, any sort of lactose in there is going to do that. Totally. All right. Summarizing: dairy should be treated as a condiment. Mm. Uh, dairy has more milk particularly has carbohydrates and sugar in it. So it can spike your glucose and it can make you, it can block your leptin. So you just get hungry and you want to eat more and more and more. Um, Oh, calcium. You get enough calcium from just eating meat. um, So you don't need to worry about eating dairy for calcium. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And um, you know, and some people just have real problems with, with dairy because it is going to be a bit pro-inflammatory even even with a two, uh, a two milk. So just be mindful. And this is, if this is reacting with you, then, then you are one of these people that really does need to strictly avoid it. And there are other people out there, especially people with autoimmune issues should be very careful with dare. I would say, just cut it out completely. And then after a few months, after your autoimmune issues have resolved, maybe trial it back in and see how it affects you. But it's sort of, it's, it's sort of a loaded gun for autoimmune um, sufferers because it, it, you know, it's just, it's just too big of a risk. I think, and, you know, if I, if I had an autoimmune issue, I, I probably wouldn't even test it in a few months. I'd probably just stay the hell away from it in general, you know, but you can test it, but I would definitely get that stuff out of your system completely. Um, and, and then really be healthy and let your body completely recover uh, and before adding that stuff back in, so you can really see what this does to you and if it's, uh, if it's safe for you to, to have, or if you even want it, you know, and just so you can get, get the proper information for sure. Okay. Great advice. Thanks, man. We'll, uh, we'll chat again. Sounds good.